Buckeye Island, La Coalition, Paniolo 2019, Paniolo 2020. What do these all have in common? They are cigars from Crown Heads and they're all produced by Drew Estate. Stick around, we're doing the 2019 Paniolo. What's going on everyone? Vic with High Desert Man and I'm excited about this one because A, I'm doing my favorite guys again, Crown Heads, and I'm doing both the 2019 and the 2020 Paniolo. Tonight we're doing the 2019, tomorrow the 2020. And they're almost the same cigar with uh, just a couple slight differences. So first, what is the Paniolo? It is the Hawaiian exclusive from Crown Heads. You know, of course, that they do exclusives for um, Ohio, the Buckeye Land, Texas, Yellow Rose of Texas, Tennessee Waltz. Um, I would love for them to do something for Arizona, which would be freaking awesome, uh, it, especially if it had something to do with High Desert or Sonora or whatever. <laughs> The Hawaii exclusive produced by Crown Heads takes its name from a 19th century term for cowboy, uh, a Hawaiian or a, uh, what, what are the Hawaiians called? Uh, the story goes, in 1832, King Kamamahea III sent one of his high chiefs to California to hire Mexican vaqueros, Mexican for cowboys, to come to Hawaii to teach Hawaiian, Hawaiians cattle and horse handling skills. Hawaii's cowboys soon became known as Paniolo, believed by etymologists to be the Hawaiianized pronunciation of Espanol. Today, the term still refers to cowboys working in the islands and to the culture their lifestyle spawned. And uh, I just realized I was going to wear, I have the 2018 Paniolo crown heads hat but it's a really really nice hat and I only wear it for certain occasions okay so the 2019 the 2019 sees a return to the Connecticut broadleaf wrapper which had not been used since the 2015 release however the blend of the 2019 is completely different aside from the wrapper so the wrapper is Connecticut broadleaf binder Mexican San Andreas filler Dominican Republic and Nicaragua and the Vitola is the Corona Gorda, five and a half by 48, which leads to the two big differences between the 2019 uh, and the 2020. They're exactly the same blend, except Willie Herrera decided to add a little Brazilian Matafina in the 2020, which just uh, came out. Um, just came out recently. This is five and a half by 48. So let's just confirm that. Yep, that's 48. And we are at, uh, well, okay, somebody got it wrong because this one is five and three quarters as well. So they're both five and three quarters in length. And I've actually smoked each of these once already. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can get these because it's a little bit funky how, how uh, you go about acquiring this stick. I've actually purchased the 17, 18, 19, and 20 and uh, I've been happy with all of them. Mm. Draw is just slightly snug but pretty good. Pull this little ribbon. All they do for the whole... actually for all of the state exclusives, all they do is a foot band. Uh, it has changed color pretty much every year uh, from what I remember for the Paniolo. Mm. Really, really good milk chocolate flavor. Some cedar and tiny, tiny bit of pepper. A little bit tight. It's uh, it could be just a little bit looser, and the cigar itself feels really tight. I mean, it's packed firm. Oh, it is. Uh, it's good. So it's interesting because uh, 
in all the Paniolos I've had, 17 through, through 20 now, they've all, it, it, it's, it's like they're all brothers and sisters. It, 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 you can tell they're all from the same family. I mean, um, I, I'll have to go back, maybe for tomorrow night, I'll go back and look up the blends of some of the others. Um, but I have gotten a familiar flavor profile out of all of them so far. All right, ordering this cigar. Uh, I have not seen if you can get them anywhere, pretty much the only place they're ever advertised and where John usually tips people off uh, on his Instagram is to reach out to Marvin Chang. Marvin Chang works for Foodland Industries. It's essentially a grocery store uh, chain and a uh, wine uh, a, a wine uh, dealer, I guess. I think I think they do groceries and they they do wines. Anyways, Marvin Chang is who you want to reach out to. His email address is m a chang at foodland.com. And basically, all you do is send Marvin uh, an email and say, hey, which paniolos do you have and what are they going to cost me? He'll usually quote you. Uh, a per price, a per stick price, and a bundle price. Now the pricing, pricing is really actually pretty good. I ordered six of the 2020 and six of the 2019. 12 cigars total. My price for all 12 sticks, including shipping, was 113.74. That came to nine dollars and forty-seven cents per cigar. Not bad at all. Very happy to uh, to buy Crown Head cigars at under ten bucks. Mm. It's got a great marrying of tobacco sweetness and what is just kind of walking the line of milk chocolate and dark chocolate sweetness. Um, a little bit of sweetness each, but more of the flavor, I should say. Um, really nice. The retro hail is super smooth. Just a touch of pepper. Uh, I would say probably mostly white pepper. Hits the back of the throat a little bit, but not bad. Mmm. It is so freaking good. Wow. I wish I could have... I don't know if you guys got that on camera. A perfect smoke ring just came off the end of the cigar. I don't even know how that happened. It's smoking like a Drew Estate. I mean, uh, it doesn't look like it's coming in the camera very well, but this thing is pouring off smoke like crazy right now. The draw is a little bit tight. I wish it was just a little looser, but I'm getting good smoke through it. Smoke is very flavorful. Uh, a little bit savory. It's real nice, kind of a little bit of a savory lean to it. Oh. The cedar is faint. There is some cedar there. And there's some leather. The leather, I would say, is just a little more pronounced than the cedar, but they're both pretty faint. But I can distinctly taste each of them. The sweetness is nice. It's it's mostly a, a nice tobacco sweetness. It's got some kind of a, mm, oh, it's got some kind of a, a spice sweetness to it that is really, really good. All right, we'll be back in just a little while. Stick around, my friends. Excellent cigar guys. Holy crap. You gotta you gotta reach out to Marvin Chang and order some of these cigars Everything is on point with this couple little issues, which I'll talk about in the rating, but Man really really good cigar. I'm really excited to get to the one tomorrow That is the same blend, but has uh, some Brazilian Matafina within the filler I'm really excited to see what that tastes like
I've actually already smoked it, but it was a few weeks ago. I don't remember it right now. Okay, so <clears throat> overall, um, the f after the first third, that sweetness I was getting faded for the most part. Uh, still a little bit of tobacco sweetness. The cocoa faded in and out. <clears throat> uh, the chocolate notes. Uh, the pepper after the first third became more of just a black pepper. There was some heat, a little bit of heat in the smoke. And also just a hint of cayenne. The peppers in this were about perfect. Really balanced. Just enough to let you know they're there, but not so much that it was a strong bite in the back of the throat or a punch in the nose. So that was really nice. Uh, the leather picked up more, and the leather and cedar, uh, I, I think at the beginning, the cedar was, uh, let's see, what did I say? I think I said the cedar was more, and there was a little bit of leather. Well, it sort of balanced out, and the, the cedar and leather really sort of blended. It's got a nice, rich, earthy body, but the body, for the most part, is more of a lighter body um, and then toward the end of the cigar the body just kind of picked up it never became more than medium but uh, just a really nice body coating and texture in the mouth is really nice it's it's just the right amount not too much of anything and I've been smoking on this stinking thing for an hour and a half now um, I got to working and I set the cigar down didn't have to touch it up with the lighter or anything. This thing just kept on burning. I don't know how it didn't just burn itself down quicker. Uh, but the burn on this thing was fantastic. The finish is short to medium. Um, it More short at, to, at the beginning of the cigar. Uh, built up into more of a medium finish. Now that we're toward the end. Holy crap. Um, and like I said, in this last third, the body has picked up, but it's still just a medium body. The pepper is still present, still um, noticeable in the back of the throat, but slight. Has uh, I have gone to my water a little bit. It kind of makes you want to drink. Uh, but the pepper is overall mild, and then it, it picked up some cinnamon notes here toward the end. And the cinnamon is mixed. The cocoa faded, but it's still there, and it's sort of blended with the cinnamon. Uh, so right now, I'm getting uh, a mix of black and white pepper, and it's mild. Cinnamon, leather, cedar, and, um, and cocoa. It's really, really nice. Right in my wheelhouse. I mean, this is, this is something I could smoke every freaking day. Now, the, the rating. Construction got a 4.5. Uh, the construction was beautiful on this cigar. I only gave it a 4.5 because the draw is just a little tighter than I like. I like to be able to pull a little bit more, uh, well, to pull through the cigar a little easier. But every time I've gotten ample smoke, there's been no problem with getting smoke out of the cigar, anything like that. So construction 4.5. The, the burn was a 5. Flavor is a 5. The, um, the body, body was very nice, like I said, so that got a five. The transitions, this got the highest rating I've given so far for transitions, I believe. It got 4.8. The transitions were, first off, there were a few transitions, and they were very, they were very subtle. It just kind of flowed right in uh, from one flavor, you know, sort of one profile that it had into the next. The transitions were complex, which I really love, something like that in a cigar. Um, I was really paying attention, even though I was working and stuff, I was really trying to keep my mind attuned to the cigar and stuff. And then the price, I gave a five, you know, $9.47, I think it was, uh, that I paid for these. That's a great price. So the overall score on this was a 4.88. 
Crown Heads, you freaking nailed it. You did a good job. Willie Herrera, you're, you're freaking, you're awesome. You just reach out to Marvin Chang. He's very responsive. Every time I've reached out to him, he's always gotten back to me. Um, no, no longer than the next morning, but usually it's within a few hours. And, um, and he's responsive. And basically the way it works is you tell him what you want. Then you get an email from Foodland. Uh, it was it Foodland. I think it's foodland.com. You get an email from them for an invoice. And it basically, in my case, it just said 12 paniolos. There, there was no breakdown of six and six or anything. Just said 12 paniolos and uh, include shipping and everything. So it's really easy. And when I got these, I was really surprised at how fast I got them. Uh, coming from Hawaii, I got them, uh, I ordered, I, I, I paid for my order in the afternoon, if I remember correctly, and it took like a day and a half. Uh, so it was the day after the next day that I received them. I couldn't believe how quick I got them. So, um, yeah, shoot, man. So the one that we'll do next will be the Paniolo 2020. And uh, you know the drill. I guess we'll just see you in the next one. It's a beautiful day out today. It is an amazing day out. Okay, so last night we did a really, really great Patriarchal Smoke uh, live stream. I was a little worried, but it took about 10 minutes for anybody to get on there. I thought I was gonna be on by my lonesome, but um, we got some people on the show. It was an awesome show. We talked for about two and a half hours. It was, it was just amazing. And then I walked out of here, <clears throat> and uh, when I came into the lab last night, it was raining, and then when I walked out, it was snowing. And uh, my wife told me snow was coming. I didn't believe her. It really shocked me to see the snow. But anyways, it was snowing. And then today, the sun is out. It's beautiful. And tomorrow, I have to go to Phoenix. By the way, what are we smoking? Well, the second Paniolo, the Paniolo 2020. I got a lot to talk about this cigar. So it is a thing to behold. So beautiful. This one is slightly different in size. I believe it is the same length, five and three quarters. Yes, it is, but uh, the one from last night, I think was 48 ring gauge. And this one is um, 46. So this is essentially a Corona Extra. Corona Extra technically is five and a half. This is five and three quarters. <clears throat> So it's a Corona Extra Plus. We're doing a match tonight. So, we'll, uh, real quick, it's, uh, this is the 2020. Um, wrapper, Connecticut Broadleaf. M binder, Mexican San Andreas, same as the 2019. Uh, and then the filler is Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Brazilian Matafina. We're gonna talk about Matafina here in just a moment. Wow, already it's a bit more bold and, and um, just more in the mouth. Similar. So far similar, but the, the pepper seems to be a bit more bitey. The pepper seems heavier. The, um, <clears throat> there's a charry note. The wood seems heavier. So tomorrow, I'm supposed to go into the valley for the burial service for Keith. Why would I be going to the burial service for Keith? My bro died uh, four years ago. Four years ago uh, tomorrow. Is, tomorrow's the anniversary. Um, it, kind of a, a weird story. Keith had a dream of moving up here uh, next to me and buying some property close to me and being out in the sticks like I am and stuff. And, and he really, really wanted to do that. He tried to work it out a number of times and different things. Anyways, um, his parents 
were taking time to decide if they were going to uh, bury him up here on my property or what they were going to do. By the way, Keith was cremated, so <laughs> it's, it's not like they've been holding on to a coffin all this time or something. And they bought a plot for Keith next to theirs, and so uh, Keith's going to be buried there. A little bit bummed out. I wish Keith was going to be buried up here, but it's cool. I totally understand. Um, anyways, I don't know if I'm going to make it across the creek because it stormed last night and this morning, and now the creek is, uh, well, the creek's not even up to where it's going to be. It usually takes about eight hours for it to, for everything up north to come down. The draw on this one is better than uh, the 2019. It's got a little bit of a grittier and dirtier uh, flavor component to it. All right, so Matafina, Brazilian Matafina. So tobacco happens to be uh, like second or third largest uh, agricultural export out of Brazil. And it's really only grown in one region. It's a region north, uh, it's the Bahia region. In fact, there used to be a company, a cigar com a brand called Bahia, or Bahia, Bahia, something like that. It's north of uh, Rio. And uh, Matafina means, uh, has something to do with the vegetation. It's like stringy vegetation in this area where they grow the tobacco and stuff. Uh, based on what um, the press release that John Huber did about this was um, the 2019 was a hit. It was a good uh, cigar and stuff. So uh, Willie Herrera just decided to mix it up a little bit and just tweak it a little and added that uh, Matafina tobacco in there. Yeah, it's weird how, how uh, different it is. There's a very similar component to it, uh, but it's, it's dirtier. And I, I don't know how to... The, the flavor is more bold and, and a little bit gritty and stuff. It's got a little bit of the same notes through the nose, but more pepper, definitely more pepper in this. Uh, it's hanging in the back of my throat more. It's the, it, the sting is lingering in my nose. It's still now just kind of fading off. <clears throat> and um, and just kind of a, a heavy, gritty flavor. Real earthy. I'm digging it. I am digging it. All right, guys. So uh, I guess I will study for a little while, smoke on this thing. And uh, we'll be back at you in just a little while. Stick around. I wanted to pop back in here just for a moment, guys, because I forgot to talk about the uh, look of the cigar and stuff. This cigar is really a cool-looking cigar. It's it's very rustic. Um, it's it's not real bumpy or anything. It's got it's got one prominent vein coming down here, um, but the way that it's wrapped, uh, there's there's a, a pinstripe that almost looks like. Almost looks like the glue sort of, like like the leaf sort of slid on glue or something. They don't put glue down the down the wrapper, but that's almost how it looks. It's uh, and it's cool because it adds sort of a pinstripe effect, like a nice suit or something, uh, to the cigar. Um, of course, it's smoking like a Drew Estate, just putting off tons of smoke, and. Um, the construction is beautiful and it's toothy. It's got a really nice satiny tooth uh, on the cigar that's, that's super nice. Really, really good cigar. <clears throat> uh, different. Uh, really different, but yet kind of the same. It has some similarities to the 2019. But, oh man, a really, really good stick. Both of these are awesome cigars. Okay, so construction, five. Burn, five. Flavor, 4.8. Body, four. Let me talk about the flavor for a minute. 
it has a richness that the 2019 also has, but the 2019 has more of that. Uh, this sort of tempers that, that richness with more of a dark earth flavor. There's darker flavors in this cigar. And uh, man, I, I, think, I think a lot of people would like both of these. And at the same time, people will lean one way or the other. They'll, they'll think one is better than the other or whatever. Body, four. Transition, three. Transitions in this weren't uh, as noticeable. And it, it just didn't have the complexity. It didn't transition as much as the other one. <clears throat> and then the price, of course, is a five. So the uh, 2019 edged this one out just barely. Uh, the 2019 was a 4.88. This one is a 4.6 and really good. This one at the halfway point got into a little bit of sweetness, just natural tobacco sweetness, um, but it was really faint and I really had to kind of discern it. The body on this one, uh, let's see, the body on this one was four, the body on the other one was five, and I think it was, the body is heavier on this one for sure. It's, it's, a, it's more of a mouth coating. Um, uh, the, the texture is kind of heavier in your mouth. But the body on the other one just was, it was smoother. It was more velvety, uh, I guess. This one is just heavier. This one took a little while to warm up. You had to warm it up a bit before flavors really sort of started jumping out at me. Um, the other one, the other one seemed like it was just a good out of the gate and then just smooth transitions through all these different uh, flavors and stuff. This one, the transitions were kind of more abrupt. Thinking that this would have gone really good with a straight cappuccino. That would have been really nice. It would have cut through the milk really nice. Yeah, I definitely think this would go good with a cappuccino. Fantastic. Uh, I was reading a little bit about the Matafina uh, tobacco. Uh, Cigar Advisor did an article back in 2017 on uh, Matafina and the, and the region and the, the growing and stuff. So, <clears throat> Matafina comes in a few different varieties. Matasol, the southern end of Matafina where the soil is great and there's plenty of rain. But since this crop, uh, since this crop is grown primarily on the side of a hill, it's hard to bring home uh, a good harvest. Matasol is a more mild in body flavor, it is more mild in both body and flavor, and there's not much of it going around right now. Oh, this was back in 2017. Mata Sao, wow, Mata Sao Gancalo. The leaf grown here makes outstanding wrappers and are super tasty from being fertilized with natural byproducts of the nearby cocoa farming industry. That's cool. And then Mata Norte, grown in the much more arid north of the Rican, Rancavo, Mata Norte tobacco is very full and very strong. It's cured in the open air as opposed to a barn. And when used as a filler, adds hearty coffee and nut flavors to the blend. So my guess would be that this is Mata Norte. Wow, I'm, uh, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. I, I almost skipped buying the Paniolo this year. And, um, and then I decided to do it. And I'm very, very happy I did. Very good. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next video, guys, stay rugged.